Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and it's time to take a look at Lightroom Mobile's Color Edit Stack. So with this image selected, I'll tap on the color icon at the bottom of the window, and we'll start here with white balance, but you should also know that we can change things like vibrance and saturation, as well as convert our images to black and white, and make selective changes to different color ranges and change their hue, saturation, or luminance values. But we'll start with white balance. If I tap custom, then I can select from a number of different custom white balance settings. Or if I prefer, I can use the eyedropper to the right of that, which will bring up this loop. I can then drag the loop over an area in my image that I think should be a neutral value. So for example, it might be the cement area here, or maybe these gray values of the pavement. Now, I'm not really sure that those are giving me a neutral. I can try one more area over here. I think that's a little bit warmer and I prefer that. So I'll tap on the check mark in order to apply that. Of course, we can also just change the temperature or the tint sliders down below here. Let me undo that by tapping the undo icon in the top right hand area. All right, so after I've set the white balance, if I want to change the vibrance or saturation, we have sliders for both. The vibrance slider is nice. It's a little bit of a bias slider. So as I move it to the right, it's looking at the relationship between the color that was already in the image and how much vibrance you're adding to that area. So for example, if you have a photograph with a person in it, you might want to consider using the vibrance slider because vibrance will increase the amount of color in the blue areas and the green areas, so maybe the sky and the grass, without necessarily overdoing the more flesh tone colors like the reds and oranges and yellows. If I take the vibrance down to the left, you'll notice that even if I go all the way to the left with the slider, I still have a little bit of color in my image. So that's what I mean by it is a relative slider. All right, I'll go ahead and just reset that by double tapping on the circle. And this time when I move the saturation slider over, you'll notice that, wow, I mean, those reds and those oranges really, really get saturated. And if I bring that all the way over to the left, then we dismiss or we get rid of all of the color in our image. So unlike vibrance, which is relative, the saturation slider is absolute. All right, what if I want to adjust a single color range, for example, like the oranges or the reds in my image? Well, then I will scroll up here and tap on the color wheel next to the black and white option. I can use the color mixer in two different ways. I can select the color that I want to work with by just tapping on the icon and then drag the hue slider. So for example, I can change those reds to be a little bit more magenta or I can drag them over to become a little bit more towards orange. I can change the amount of saturation in that color range and I can also lighten it up or darken down the luminance values. If I want to see a before and after, I can tap and hold with one finger in the image area, so that's before and that's after. Now, while I'm making these color adjustments, I probably don't need that histogram, so I will double finger tap the screen in order to hide that. The other way that I can work with the color mixer or HSL is by using the targeted adjustment tool and that's the little white icon right here. So once I pick up the targeted adjustment tool, then I can choose between hue, saturation, and luminance. I'll leave it set to hue and I'll tap on this green board area here and just drag to the left and you can notice that it gets a little bit more green or yellow. If I tap and drag to the right, it's going to go more towards the blues. If I change this to saturation, we tap to the left, it'll desaturate, tap to the right, it'll increase saturation. And with luminance, I can either make those areas darker or brighter. All right, when I'm finished, I'll tap on the color mixer HSL, tap again on the color wheel to bring back all of the different color options in the color edit stack. And then I'll go ahead and tap color in order to hide the interface, or I can tap anywhere outside of my image to hide the interface. I'll tap and hold to show a little before 
and after. So as you can see, it's really easy to make changes to the color either globally or selectively using the HSL to adjust the color range. Let's move to the next image here. And I want to convert this image to black and white. So I'll tap to bring back the interface, tap the color edit stack, and then tap black and white. Now this is the default conversion from color to black and white, but I can go in and edit that as well by tapping on the color wheel to the right of black and white. Now it's up to you how you use the grayscale mixer. If you use the targeted adjustment tool by tapping on the icon, you'll notice that the image is previewed in color so that you know what color you're clicking on when you're trying to convert a color to a specific grayscale value. So if I tap in the door area here and then drag to the left, you can see that the blues are being converted darker. If I tap and drag to the right, they're converted lighter. And by the way, you can also tap and drag up and down if you prefer. So let's say I wanted to bring the blues down, but I want to bring the reds up. I'll tap in the red area then and drag over to the right in order to lighten those values. So you can use the targeted adjustment tool or we can put that back and you can selectively choose a color range and then change the luminance using the slider instead. It really just depends on which way you prefer to work. I'll go ahead and make those reds a little bit darker and brighten up not only the cyan but also the blues in the image. So there we go, I can single finger tap in the image area to show before and after. I'll tap the color wheel in order to back out of the gray mixer and then tap the color edit stack in order to hide the interface. And of course, any changes that you make here, if you belong to the Creative Cloud or Creative Cloud for Photography plans, then all of the changes will be synchronized across your mobile devices as well as to Lightroom on the desktop. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.